Bad Llama, level three. It's a bad llama, llama, but it's bad. If he were human, it's he'd be llama. covered in prison tattoos and would be hanging out in front of the Circle K hitting on 14-year-old girls. They might be willing to sell you something if you have good stuff to trade. You won't want to get hit by their spit. Okay, and we're live. So the sound uh, sound bars look good, so we should be good to go. <laughs> I'm gonna be watching the chat for you. Okie dokie. Good. All right. Cool. All right. Well, with that said, then I am going to go through my usual uh, community community management. Oh, there we go. We got elite already. <laughs> All right. Perfect. It'll be your turn. I'll I did die. The last one. That's nice. I'll have to find something. I've not practiced anything. I'll come up with something. Okay. And um, so I got a little bit of a boilerplate type of thing, do my little community management part here. Uh, so as a reminder to everybody, uh, the um, abusive language behavior towards anyone in the official social channels, uh, social channels rather, uh, Discord, Twitch, forums, or in-game are subject to the TOS. Uh, the community, so the community is one of the best out there. Uh, though the community does do a very good job of self-moderating, and we do appreciate that, by the way, it's noticed. Uh, action is taken when the offenses are egregious or chronic. So uh, I'm not saying anything else about that. Uh, the, um, the thing to keep in mind here is that uh, also, if you're going to do an Ask a Dev, uh, there was an Ask a Dev today actually asking Chris about something specific. Uh, which is um, exactly what the Ask a Dev is meant for. Uh, if you have a min-max type thing, if you're not sure if a buff or uh, or a um, uh, you know something else, of, uh, some kind of a um, aspect of the mechanic is not working right or whether it's intended, Ask a Dev is the place to ask. If you want to ask for something to be added to the game or changed uh, from the way that it's intended to be done, then that would be a wish list forum, and uh, the uh, logout uh, feedback, of course, is for general feedback. And we really want to have newer players uh, uh, type something up for us in the uh, logout feedback. Um, please don't use the logout feedback for bug reports um, or for wish list items. Uh, please don't use the Ask a Dev for bug reports or wish list items. Uh, and uh, basically, this. Uh, this overloads us. We have to read through all that stuff, and we do read through all that stuff. So um, basically, uh, I guess we get to say that um, if you ask for something and ask a dev three or four times, you're pretty much guaranteeing you're never going to get it because you know it's going to get to a point where we're not going to really be looking at those things if um, they're not asked for in the right place where the community can give feedback and. Um, if you keep asking for the same thing over and over again, it's just going to basically get put down lower on that list. So, all right. Well, that said, um, overall, everything's going pretty good with that. And here we are in R105. Uh, we um, just small release, not very much uh, came out in here. It's still a, a polish release, bug fixes and stuff like that. Uh, we are continue to work on uh, Unity 20.1. So that's part of the reason why that's uh, uh, happening at this point. And um, well, Chris, you want to um, jump right in and talk about some of that stuff, and then we'll talk about what's going to happen for R106 as we get deeper into that. Hmm. Chris is tired as always. <laughs> uh, yeah, I can talk about the Unity 2021 stuff. So that, that we're doing something finally uh, that we should have done a long time ago that would have sped up 2021 migrations. We have a problem that we've always used a single build machine for doing any of our real builds for QA, dev, or for live. And we always kept them on the same machine trying to keep things, uh, I don't know. I'm not even sure why we've kept them on the same machine. I think it was because it was the fastest machine. But the problem is that is meant that because it's on a single machine, the way our build process was set up, we can't use we can't have like an installation of 20, Unity 2021 and an installation of Unity 2018. So we can only be doing one thing at a time. So it basically blocks us off for about two weeks of the month. We can work on doing stuff for you guys on live or dev internally. 
And then the other two weeks, we're trying to do stuff on 2021 because it's difficult to switch the machine. Uh, and re-importing a project of this size, uh, there's a number of issues with it, but uh, anyone who's used Unity for a large project knows it, it takes, literally it'll take a full day to import a project. So swapping back and forth, is not really a thing. Uh, not a thing we look forward to. Uh, but, so that's the 2021 has taken a lot longer. That's actually been a big blocking factor is that we can really only be doing one thing or the other at a time. We spend a ton of time swapping back and forth. But uh, as of hopefully uh, Monday was, I'm crossing my fingers, we will have not one, but two new build machines arriving. Uh, this will allow us to have, uh, they're also faster, they're a newer, uh, generation. I think the current build machine runs on, I'm not, I'm trying to remember what generation CPU it is, but it runs on DDR three, two, two. Uh, oh, two. that two. one's on two. A lot of them are on two. Uh, there's a couple of things on three. This one is on DDR four. Whoa. Uh, and it is also more specifically the other one, the current build machine is not optimal for a build machine and that it is 48 cores of power. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, it uh, for those who know much about Unity, you also know that it is mostly single threaded in terms of how it does things a lot. So having 48 cores of power means that when we're doing builds, even if we're doing three builds at a time, we're using about four or five cores out of those 48. So the only thing that really matters is clock speed, which it is, I think, a 2.6 uh, gigahertz uh, thing, because mm -hmm. it's, it's a server that's actually racked up there. Uh, but I did finally, this time I bought special uh, machines, they're lower core count, but uh, they're 4.8 gigahertz. They're some of the new, newer, uh, i trying to what they're called, E2243 maybe, I forget what they are. I'm sure only like 10% of you nerds out there what, know what I'm talking about anyways, but uh, much higher single core clock speed, much faster RAM. Uh, it'll have faster faster disk system because really the thing that's been killing us on the 2021 stuff is you make a change and then you check on it tomorrow is basically what it's been for a while. So in addition to that other stuff. So that that's why this is taken. We're expecting it to take a release and we got 90% of the way there. Uh, and it's been at 95%, 96%. I think we're at like 99%. We actually did have, for those who don't know, we have the builds out on 2021 on QA. There's some problems up. Uh, Devil Cult is working on the problems. I believe this, his last fix didn't work, did it? No, it didn't. Um, okay. we, it's funny because we actually got to a point where we were like within minutes of actually publishing a full QA build on 2021 and then discovered a problem and that basically reverted us back into a, a cycle that that things became unstable but um, yeah like you said it's it, uh, every time we would come up we do a build it, it's like X number of hours and then we were competing with the production stuff uh, to do builds as well and of course while yeah. we were on 2021 we couldn't do a like a live build so uh, as we approach uh, release 105's you know deadline we had to revert all the uh, all the build stuff to go back to 2018 and then do the build and of course when we go back to 2018 we started running into some more weirdness and I had to correct uh, correct that as well but we uh, that's that's where we are so basically going forward um, we should be in uh, a good shape where either um, well I'm just going to jump into it and say, here's what we're, we're going to plan to do. Instead of so far, even with the uh, one build, even with the two new build machines, we uh, Chris and I are going to be down there in Austin taking care of that next week, uh, assuming that the hardware comes in on time and everything, and we'll get that staged. <laughs> so um, then uh, what we plan on doing is um, extending our window for R106. We're on R105 now. And we're going to extend our window for R106 out to uh, the end of October. So basically it gives ourselves two months to do all the stuff for 2021. We don't have to go back and forth on, on build machines, things like that. The, uh, the new build machines will help us avoid all this back and forth stuff. But this also gives a bigger sprint. Um, as, uh, as you guys know, uh, Sanyo is working on Viclin. This will give him more time to get uh, Viclin nice and pretty and, and all ready and uh, 
um, done as well. Uh, that type of thing. We'll still do the um, login rewards and the subscriber rewards at the end of September as normal. We should be able to get that done, especially with this new build machine in place. So we'll be able to have one on 2018 and one on 2021. But uh, basically, we uh, instead of keep on saying, well, you know, we're looking at 2021 for now R105, R106, R107, we're going to push R106 out a little bit, give ourselves a bit uh, of a longer sprint, as it's called, to uh, get these things done. And if we get it done early, then, you know, maybe we still stay on our track. But this way, uh, uh, we're not uh, keep on pushing out something and saying that we're going to get it done when it doesn't get done. I myself. But yeah, anyways, I'm excited it'll be one of our first new hardware upgrades in a while. People are talking about just how old DDR two is that the ddr2 is old uh that is uh what most of the machines that we have at our data center run on because we i mean it's one of those things there's for servers you generally upgrade them to save power but we haven't needed to save power uh like wattage uh and then you upgrade for reliability but we've had such solid machines we hate upgrading a machine that's showing no signs of failure we did have that one machine fail I think we've got like maybe a total of like 28 boxes up there. And I think we've had one failure, which some of you may remember about two years ago, I think, uh, which was when I had to go up to the data center and basically sleep there overnight, uh, try and get things uh, reworked. Uh, our, that was the one time live went down for more than I think an hour. Uh, but anyway, I'm excited to have some new boxes up there. Uh, maybe we can look at swapping some of the others out, but uh, again, it's, you don't want to mess with stuff that's that's working. Uh, this was clearly something where we're replacing something that was not working, which is our current build process that was taking too long, which normally is not a problem. But for this massive iteration stuff we have to do for 2021, uh, it is a problem. And uh, in case people were wondering, the last problem I think some people saw might have seen that on QA when we did have a live brief with people to try out the houses were not there. Uh, their houses were not there. Uh, that had to do again with so many different tendrils like everything was working the build works everything looks good but something about the id generation in unity 2021 was slightly different than it was in previous versions so when it was generating some hashes when it was doing some id generations it was coming up with slightly different values which means that the id for your house <laughs> tying like your house data to the actual lot uh, change the lot ID change. So basically, if you went on QA during that time, everybody's house was missing. All everything was gone. So kind of kind of a blocker. Uh, but anyways, uh, we we have a handle on that now, I think. And right now, probably just get that out. And we could we probably should push that. Or probably will push that out here pretty quick. The QA build and just leave it out, even if it is broken. But I think we'll have it fixed here shortly. Yeah, actually, I have. Um... Uh, I think I know what is wrong with that one. I think it's the rolling reports. I, yeah, I'm pretty sure that's the only thing left. So I just need to, I've actually changed it in source code, just need to get that merged over into QA and do a build. And I think we'll, uh, that'll be back up and running. Those are very famous last words, by the way. That's the only thing left. <laughs> that, that, that's gotta be it. That's yeah. the only thing left. Yeah, what else could there <laughs> possibly be? <laughs> hmm. All right. All right. Uh, and I will be singing the song. I've not looked for one, John Marcus. It's been a while. I need to, it's been a while since I got to stretch my voice out there. I actually, I sing on the trail and I've been doing a lot of hiking lately. So, uh, and I also wanted to call out, uh, there's going to be a couple of projects here. I'll probably mention and pimp a little bit. Uh, one is called pay dirt which I'll mention now, but I'll get more information for you guys on that, that a friend is uh, doing that, but I want to call out Pantheon for stealing my my gig, my thing. There's a Pantheon Sea Shanty, apparently, that went around. I saw the guys singing that Pantheon Sea Shanty. So <laughs> apparently the singing for an MMO is catching on. Oh. I don't think so. <laughs> I think it was actually made by fans. I just thought it was actually a pretty decent Sea Shanty. Sounds no one ever wrote us a Sea Shanty. So we should also remind everybody that uh, the prizing will be drawn today, at least uh, at least twice, and um, 
the phrase is fall is on its way. So go ahead and say that in game in universal chat, zone chat, local chat. Fall is on its way. There you go. A bunch of people are saying it in game right now. And uh, that'll get you into the pool for the prizes today. It made me want to go check and figure out what our, uh, how old our servers actually are. Oh. All of them. <laughs> Just trying to figure out when the processors came out. I know what model they are. Hmm. Uh, so the servers. Let's see. Well, they show 2009 is when they came. Oh no, 2009 is when they were discon or discontinued. <laughs> so before, oh, okay. so if someone was saying 2007 is when it came out. Well, they don't immediately swap everything over, especially not on server side where it's uh, they do ECC and you know have other stuff going on, mm -hmm. uh, and have a lot more like buffered and all sorts of other stuff so they can cram more memory into them. But uh, yeah, 2009 is when they discontinued it. So, anyways, they run great enough. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, actually, they they've been fine. Uh, most of yeah. most of the issues we've seen recently are actually internet issues, um, which are definitely outside of our control. So, yeah. Um, so let's and, go ahead. Oh no, go ahead. All right. So let's talk about heritage. Uh, so heritage. So this is one we were going to pull out, and some part of it got done. The other part, uh, I think, Devil Cult did a quick attempt to fix it and then got scared and backed it out and then thought he had it fixed and then didn't have it fixed so the new stuff being sold right now should be non-heritage the server change is going to be going into client and server change so that heritage will vanish from your screen uh, that should be going live next week we're going to shoot for next friday i'll probably try to get a test build done on that maybe monday tuesday so we can actually see how that uh make sure that works but Right. And that's part Anyways. of the reason that we're going to be, you know, even with the one issue that we're seeing right now on QA, even if we can't fix that, we're going to put a QA build up so that way we could test all the heritage stuff, make sure that it's working yep. the way we want. Uh, but yeah, so anyway, so heritage should be going bye bye. The flag will be going bye bye. The, you know, not being able to transfer all your existing items should still or should uh, be transferable. They'll behave just like they were never heritage at all, which. They never should have been heritage at all. But right. And anyway. just one correction is that currently, because um, uh, Devil Cult backed out that change, the store yeah. is currently still selling things as heritage. Okay. So. Oh, that's right. Okay. Uh, anyways, so Friday we will have, hey, look, it's a Sanyo. It's a wild Sanyo back from his uh, time off. Yep. Hi, how's it going? Welcome back. My mom turned 80, by the way. That was why I was Whoa. gone. Yep. Oh, and I was also remiss in mentioning that uh, um, we have our uh, Labor Day. Is it Labor Day? Yeah, Labor Day sales going on right now. Um, so uh, that's 20% off of Kodos, 20% 20 off Kodo up, uh, pop upgrades, 30% uh, off in the Crown Store in-game, and uh, of course, double XP with the extra login bonus as well. Um, that's going to run all through um, Labor Day itself. So uh, more than likely uh, at uh, midnight, uh, you know, twenty three fifty nine, the end of the day on the fifth. Uh, that's uh, Labor Day itself. Um, I'll probably turn all that stuff off. I could be bribed to leave it on for another day. Uh, you know, uh, you could send money to... <laughs> so, um, yeah, so we have that sale going on and that's gonna last, uh, uh, was it just about two weeks, right? Yeah, almost almost two weeks for the sales and the double XP. Yeah, and that was obvious, uh, just uh, Stephen uh, proposed that 
the sale and he was like we should turn on the sales for the the thing and it was clear after you talk for a few seconds i realized it's like he doesn't know when labor day is he thinks it's monday <laughs> he thinks it's this monday coming up not next monday so but we decided to leave it on for an extra week just because we haven't had a sale in a while yep so keith what did you do for your mom's uh, 80th uh well uh i was uh i was a secret first of all so she didn't Ooh. know i was coming Ooh. uh I have uh, two brothers, and uh, uh, one of them knew. One of them cons conspired with me to get me down there, or up there, I should say. And uh, so mostly it was just sort of like home stuff. Uh, it's my first flight or any sort of travel since the pandemic lockdown stuff, so it was kind of a big deal there. Yeah. Uh, and usually going home meant the Christmas time kind of thing. Uh, so we did sort of summer stuff. Uh, she likes to put out like a bunch of uh, one of my brothers makes a lot of uh, statues and stuff. Uh, and actually, hold on a second. You're going to show us one. So some of you may remember uh, this bad boy. Oh, nice. Which is not Lennon. It's me. <laughs> uh, he also, I guess uh, a couple of years ago, he made a couple of mugs based on some comic stuff I did. And uh, anyway, he makes a ton of like uh, lawn uh, statues for my mom, you know, cutesy little animals or semi-realistic looking one, octopus, uh, gnomes, uh, deer, big lion head uh, thing, ton of stuff. So she puts those out uh, in the summer. So I got to see all those out. It's, it's a lot. He does a lot. And then, uh, you know, we did the barbecue stuff. Uh, uh, she gave me like uh, a couple years worth of uh, a few Christmas presents that she had been like saving. I can't take these back with you. I said, why don't you just save them for Christmas and just pad up the, the gifts? And she's like, no, take them. Uh, uh, mostly that kind of stuff, you know, home stuff. You know, we didn't really go to any special events or anything. So hey, my good. mom's my mom's six. Our 80th birthday was eight days ago. Uh, and for her 80th birthday, I'm taking her uh, and her older brother, who's 84, yeah. uh, to hike on the Appalachian Trail. And I'm going to carry all the extra stuff and guide them. Uh, it's funny. It sounds, like our, sounds like our moms were born like a day apart. <laughs> <laughs> kind of funny. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so it's going to be uh, Appalachian Trail hike with and she gets to go with Maxine and then my yeah. and Maxine gets to meet this will be the first time she's ever met her uncle uh just I think they they're in Georgia and you know yeah. getting close to 80 and they don't do a ton of traveling so it's the same yeah. so we just haven't ever actually been over there so that and uh, also she gets to uh, my cousin's going to go and two of her cousins that she's never met so so she's gonna do hiking uh yeah my 80 year old mom yes yeah, she is yeah my she's mom training. does a lot of stuff around the house puttering and you know probably climbing where she shouldn't and jump like that but uh i don't <laughs> think she'd be able to do any uh long-term hiking at least not without some uh, prep first we're keeping yeah she's been training for this but she she continues to hike and do other active stuff and kayaks and stuff but wow but yeah i'll, I'll make sure and post yeah. post pictures yeah. but yeah this is uh my my mom and uncle her brother obviously uh, like they, up until their early seventies were doing, they'd go and they'd do a week on the Appalachian trail every year. And they were trying to hike the Appalachian trail, doing a little section hikes at a time. So this is kind of their, they wanted to get out one more time. They know they're not going to finish the Appalachian trail, but they want to get out one more time. I think they've done about 600 miles. So we're going to try to do 20 miles, I think in five days. So we're not setting the goal too high. We may move that bar up a little bit though. But anyways, happy birthday to moms. Happy birthday. Yeah, both of them. Here we go. Well, we have a break here. Uh, I'll answer yeah. that uh, the question that came up earlier today. Uh, Janie Murphy was asking, why is there a skill pickpockets if it doesn't even work? You're right. That we should probably at least have some note by it. Uh, that does work when Ransom is on. When Ransom's off, it does not work. And right now, Ransom is off. Uh, that is one of those super hot topic type things and it's really hard to get measurements and like know what the right thing to do with it is. 
Uh, but currently, Ransom is off, uh, which means that Pickpockets doesn't work, which because it uses the exact same system. So uh, just throwing that out there for uh, Jamie Mur or, uh, Murphy. Uh, and John Marcus had a question also from earlier today. What about the unusual damage increase of Black Blade Pass demons after the R103 Summon Demon rework? Which, oops, I didn't know. Uh, thanks for pointing <laughs> me to that. <laughs> uh, I will take a look at that, though. Uh, and uh, as always, don't assume we know everything. There's a lot of stuff. Uh, and especially I'm uh, even more scattered brain and exhausted than normal, so. Let's see. Sorry, I didn't mean to derail things. No, no, <laughs> trust me. <laughs> I'm trying. I'm over here in Castellatos inviting everybody in the party who shows up and uh, suggesting that maybe we go do a hunt or something. See what happens here. I think it's uh, everybody's trying to see if they can get the, uh, the Castellatos buff up to max. Uh, let's see. I do owe somebody a song. I'm going to call in a, a, a support for this. Hey, Maxine. <laughs> We've actually practiced this. Oh, and this is the saddest thing ever. Maxine, you want to come in here for a minute? Yeah. She has a ponytail because she went to visit her grandma. Uh, and she's in her swimsuit because we were going to go swim. And what happened? The pool was closed. Oh. <laughs> Here, stand up, Maxine. We have to sing the song. So I was going to let you sing. We will sing. Oh, really? I'm going to let you do uh, this one. You know this one. Ready? Mm -hmm. So this is for uh, John Marcus here. Who's John Marcus? He's uh, turned in gang. He does lots of good stuff. He helps out with a lot of things. And he wants to hear you sing the song. This is the probably the first song I sang for anybody on this. Go ahead. You know the song. Why are you looking? Stop looking at that. Stop looking. Just sing the song. <laughs> All right, then I'm going to sing it. God, a will. Will tell to tell you why the will will tell her to. About flopping fish and girls I love. And nights like this with the moon above. A will will tell and it's all true. I swear by my tattoo. There was Mermaid Minnie Who down by Madagascar She would kiss me Anytime that I would ask her Then one evening her, her flame of love flew out Wait, shouldn't it be on? Okay. Blow me down and pick me up She'll swap me for a trout I got a whale. I got a whale to tell you lies. A whale to tell the truth. About fluffing fish and girls I love. And that's like this with the moon above. A whale to tell and it's all true. I swear by my tattoo. Love there was Typhoon Tessie. Met her off the coast of Java. When we kissed, I bubbled up like molten lava. Then she gave me the scare of my young life. Blow me down and pick me up. She was the captain's wife. We don't normally sing that part. All right, Maxine, thank you very much. I'm sure hey. there are tons of uh, the flaws going out there that the singing is over, though. <laughs> and that you are awesome. <laughs> <laughs> All right, off you go. Thank you, everybody, for the subs and the bits. And I saw that somebody here, Spry1, had gifted uh, subs to um, five people. Five? Yeah. I was one of them. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. I'm going to check. Uh, I'll watch chat here for a minute. You guys can talk. Talk amongst right. yourselves. Go ahead. How's, uh, how's Vicklin looking? Uh, well, I've been uh, away for a week, so uh, but it's looking okay. Uh, in the update, I guess we posted a, uh, a tiny picture of one section. Still work in progress. It may look a, not a lot different, but uh, you know, the, the block out was there for the, the for the village part of it. Uh, the gist, I mentioned this before, I think, but the gist of Vicklin will be you, you come in from uh, what I call the a far side. You can make your way through uh, a, a forest area to like a beach area. 
uh, and on the beach area will be the village that was in the picture. It's uh, uh, the main residents there are raiders who uh, ransack, uh, I guess, other communities up and down the coast. Uh, but uh, they're cool with people coming in to trade. So, you know, you can come in and talk to them, trade, get some quests, uh, use their uh, crafting stations, things like that. Uh, I, I decided that they kind of like colors for some reason because everything was sort of like monotone. So slightly different colors for the roofs than you might see in other buildings. Uh, they actually even have like a little shack that has a bunch of dyes in it uh, and, uh, and cloth. So for some reason, they, they, they like a little bit of color in their life, uh, even though they're bloodthirsty uh, Viking types. Uh, they are part of uh, the Norgard Empire, although they're, they're far enough away, just like Tangelmeyer is uh, technically uh, part of the Norgard Empire. Uh, and uh, But where Tangelmeyer, it's a place that's sort of like run down and barely able to, to keep up, and everyone's sort of paranoid and worried about the, the cursed wood that's nearby. Uh, these Viklin guys are very proactive. You know, they don't wait for anything to happen to them. Uh, but they will be in a state of mourning, and that's related to some of the storyline quests that go on in in the area. Uh, what else? Uh, uh, there will be uh, things like panthers in the area, some saber tooths. Uh, there'll be a special wave battle involving them in one uh, particular area in the cave. There will be. Uh, uh, spiders, uh, sand spider types, uh, I'm going to call them, uh, what do I call them, reef spiders that are actually uh, kind of colorful. And uh, uh, some more normal things and uh, a special secret area or, or, or not easily accessed area that will have some unusual creatures in it, some mystery. So I'll, I won't explain too much about that. Uh, I kind of meant it to be kind of a small scene, uh, and as usual, I'm making it uh, too big. Uh, those of you know, like, uh, it's not as big as, like, uh, uh, oh, God, I can't think of the name of my Cobalt City. Grusk. It's not as big as, as Grusk. Grusk uh, ended up being, like, kind of kind of huge. You know, it was, it was originally meant to be, like, a core of the size, and it ended up, you know, being as big as it was. Uh, so the, the Viklin... The whole scene itself was kind of meant to be maybe around half the size, so it's kind of ended up being double. But being, uh, it's a little bit more acceptable when it's wilderness and not uh, a city. A city, you really got to put in all those little little touches. Where wilderness, uh, you know, there's going to be a lot of trees and rocks and bushes and stuff. And uh, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll put in like things to find in the wilderness. Uh, a little bit like the uh, Outlaws Run, which also ended up being way bigger than I thought. I don't know why I do it to myself. I plan it like small, and then I end up being huge. Uh, so, anyway, that's that's Vicklin coming along okay. Uh, I uh, hopefully there might be a, a testy kind of version on QA next release that people can play with a, ver a version. Uh, you wouldn't you won't be able to get to it like normal, but you know maybe we'll bring some players there. Uh, directly, and you can just sort of run around, and uh, you can friends can teleport to you, uh, something like that. We'll we'll see. We'll see how that goes. I don't really know. It depends upon how our other updates go, I guess as well. Yep. Now, uh, um, saying that uh, uh, you weren't here for it, but uh, we were talking about R one hundred and six, which is our next release, uh, yeah. may actually get pushed out to. Well, we're we're basically officially saying that it's going to be targeted as. Uh, the last Thursday of October instead of the last yeah. Thursday of September. Uh, of yep. course, we still have to do some maintenance cycle on the server uh, at the end of September. For, uh, we, of course, we have our login rewards and subscriber rewards that still need yeah. to be deployed. So uh, um, Viklins can still go up onto uh, you know QA server and, and yeah. uh, you know uh, have that situation where you could pull players to it. Um, yeah, we had talked with, about the delay, but it occurs to me we didn't talk about if QA and live had the same delay. Right. Yeah, and QA. Should, but anyway, I'll, right, I'll, QA, I'll get Bitcoin done as soon as possible. Uh, yeah. So oh yeah. Yeah. Fine. Yeah. It said it, um, it, the, the extra time actually allows for the scenes to be better anyway. So, um, yeah. You know, so as far as the content release is good. Um, one uh, one thing I want to note here uh, because uh, some people have uh, actually asked about this. Um, if something, uh, if the pot upgrades are on sale, um, you know, like the uh, the Kodo based pot upgrades are on sale, yeah. 
Um, if you reach out to the customer service and you don't get response right away, don't worry, you're locked in for that. Just make sure that you do get the auto response from us that says that we have a, you know, basically a 10 day window to respond back to you. So once we have the, um, the email in, in our bin, then um, the, the sale price is guaranteed. That's not uh, a problem whatsoever. Um, even if the um, sale ends on the 5th and we still haven't gotten everything all cycled through. So uh, let me also say, am I correct to say, you can correct me if I'm wrong, Stephen. Sure. But uh, if, as we've stated, the, uh, the following release will be delayed uh, by a few weeks, uh, that will also mean that any pot upgrades or changes uh, will not happen in that mid-time. They, they have to come with a big release update. They don't come independent of the big update. Right. Right? That was, yep. That's still true for this special yeah. case? Yeah, pretty much. I, like, it, it depends, actually, because, uh, uh, for instance, like right now, if somebody has stuff coming in, we have a patch plan for September 2nd. So, and that uh, that patch actually could implement um, pot, uh, pot updates or any new pots that come in. Yeah, I do have to do a pot update uh, today. And so if I do that pot update today, when's that going in? <laughs> it's behind scenes uh, stuff. People don't listen. For Was it? <laughs> We're still under lockdown, so it'll go in the next patch. And I'm gonna. There's definitely gonna be a fairly sizable patch that'll get testing that'll go out on Friday. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and just, I think you, since you're out, you weren't at the meeting where we talked about the delaying thing uh, as yeah. a possibility. And I think you missed the start of this stream, so you missed, probably missed the part where I was talking about just the. I mean, but you've seen what it is. It's Devil Cold, and I trying to get and the uh, Ravelox trying to get 2021 updated yeah. and so much of the release it's like you get two weeks and then it's a huge pain to switch off and you get two weeks on um, 2018 and two weeks uh and it's just you know you can imagine if we have the same thing but we have make it an eight week cycle then we basically get two weeks and then we get six weeks constant to do things and when you're only getting a few you know again some of it is throwing darts at what magic has changed in unity that's making now generate different id codes uh, or, you know, do some other magical weird thing on Linux. Uh, so, but anyways, that, that was the main talk about, but, uh, again, we'll see if that means no pod updates and no anything else. Uh, I think the real things we just didn't want to commit to any risky changes that, you know, really require more full testing cycle. So, yeah, uh, pot, pots are pretty safe. That may be one we can, we can find a way to work in. Yep. Yeah. And let also, me also was something I mentioned before my vacation. <laughs> I said, "Don't screw me over." Hmm. This is critical. While you were gone, we had a meeting and we screwed you over. Sorry about that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I knew it. <laughs> we took a vote. It was unanimous. Yeah. Um, I should have told also... my mom to not be born yet. I should have said, "Wait a couple weeks." Yeah, That's what I should have said. I uh, I also should mention that I I snuck in um, uh, hold fasts. Um, uh, those are new pots, the lowest uh, pot level that we have, uh, usually are $900, and I believe it's $720. They're 20% 20, uh, 20 off as well. I snuck that in. So, I'm okay. <laughs> forgive me, Chris. I put something on sale and we didn't talk about. So. That's all right. I, I actually saw I went and looked to see what things were on. Uh, but yeah, totally fine. And sorry, I just got broken and uh, and uh, people like it and uh, you, know, you know works with the website and all that. Yeah. So that's all cool. So we got that. Um, now, on my side of things, uh, of course, I had plans for this month uh, um, with the assumption that 2021 was actually in the bag. Uh, <laughs> I, um, it worked. It worked for us. Uh, yeah, <laughs> sure. Um, so, uh, with, with that said, obviously, I, I didn't get to do the stuff that I was uh, planning on dedicating my time to this month. But uh, I am uh, just basically same same stuff I plan on doing this month. I'm just going to move that over and start working on it again. Uh, as long as uh, everything stabilizes, I am going to be in Austin um, this coming week. I'm leaving actually for Austin on Monday. Um, as we discussed previously uh, earlier in, in the stream, Chris and I are going to be working together in the data center, and uh, I'm going down there to meet up with Scotty and Dennis Lupe and uh, go to a concert and some other stuff like that. So, uh, What concert? Uh, it's a, con a band called Ghost. Mm. Yeah, everybody look that up. Uh, it's a... Um, 
they're a thematic band, uh, and the lead singer uh, considers himself a uh, uh, a pope of sort. It's uh, sorts. It's it's kind of a, a weird thing. Their music is really really good. Um, it uh, harkens to um, geez, I guess a uh, you know mixture between like Rush and uh, uh, Pink Floyd and and uh, some other stuff, but. Um, uh, kind of progressive and um, uh, all the band members are actually behind masks. They're all the band members are called ghouls and uh, the lead singer calls himself Papa. Uh, you know, it's like there's a Pope and um, there have been some famous people in this band uh, in the past, uh, including Dave Grohl actually was in that band. Yeah, that's a point. famous person. Yep. So, <laughs> Um, it's a, it's an interesting thing, but the, their music is actually quite good. Uh, you know, he's kind of ignore the um, uh, the tongue in cheek uh, uh, ant antichrist type of stuff going on there. So <laughs> anyway, I'm going to see them. There, the, that concert is on Tuesday and um, in Austin. Then uh, in a few weeks after that, I'm going actually to San Antonio to see um, uh, a, uh, who, who am I seeing out there. Um, well, actually, um, I'm going to see Alice in Chains in Dallas, and then the very next day, I'm going to uh, San Antonio to see Rammstein. Uh, so that'll be fun as well. Another long trip. <laughs> a lot of music. Yep, lots of music. And uh, I think I'm actually, Brazen Spirituality uh, invited me to come down to Houston, and we're going to go see... A band down there as well, and I forget. Oh, Evanescence! I'm going to go see Evanescence in Houston. Uh, that's on September 4th. So the next 30 days is going to be a lot of a uh, lot of concerts for me. Got to catch Sounds up. Like a lot of God. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> and uh, apologies if you saw my camera shake and there was no earthquake here. I had a sneeze earlier this morning, and uh, I'm still recovering my monitor. That was me trying to clean a spot off my monitor that was bothering me. So. Important stuff. Yep. Elwin Moon asked, said that you didn't know that Ramstein was going to be in San Antonio, and neither did I. I mean, it was just one of those things where I happened to uh, uh, look up and find out that they're going to be local. It's going to be an interesting thing because they, their concerts are pretty much completely in German. Um, so, but the, again, it's a it's a music thing. The music is really good. So, looking forward to the concert. Uh, let's see what else I got in here. So, yeah, as I said, all right, so go ahead. Oh, I was just going to call out a, a question I had from Owsley, oh, yeah. uh, which was he had an idea. This is more of an idea that I stole from him, uh, which is the uh, Kabul toilet uh, basement entrance. Sit on the toilet to uh, enter the basement. No? <laughs> all right, maybe not. No. Du hast Mitch Dufrag. Looks like people are talking about uh, uh, oh, Ramstein. Uh, yep. They've been around a long, long time. Let's see. Like eight albums. So we're getting ready I... to uh, pull some prizes, guys. So if you haven't yet, uh, be sure to say the phrase of the day. Or phrase of the day month or whatever um that uh which is what is it again what is that phrase phrase is i've lost the phrase uh, i don't know i'm going through the ask a dev uh, channel there it is uh fall is on its way so make sure you say that in game in any of the chats in game to qualify for the prizing will be Running that. All right. Let's see. I've got another one here from XCATTV. Uh, please down the, turn the brightness down in snow biomes. Uh, this is one of those things. Oh, it's way too bright for anyone. This is one of those things that goes around a lot. Uh, you'll find at computer game companies, probably a lot of different companies, but everybody's monitor is slightly different. We've tried doing the calibration, doing the USB stuff, but what everyone thinks is the right amount of brightness is so insanely different uh, between different computers. But uh, I actually agree on that. Some of it is also if you turn off your bloom, it looks a little less crazy, but uh, that's definitely getting up into the bloom 
uh, pain threshold for uh, some of those. We have a gamma setting in, in video, right? Is yep. that, yeah, that's, we, do. we yeah. do have it. So that's definitely self-controlled um, per client. It can help. Yeah. And Just also I want to thank one. Twilight Tempest for 1,900 bits. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Is some of the issue with the snow scenes because there's just so much snow and there's not a lot to break it up. Like with grass, there's a lot of texture changes. You know, there's browns yep. and there's greens and, mm -hmm. and other colors. But with the snow, it's it's white and mostly white and nearly completely white. <laughs> One of the... Um... Oh, like our tundra encounter scene, the, the snow in there is like a little bit grayer. So it's a little bit duller and darker. So it doesn't have that pop that you have in like Jotengrund. Uh, but you know, maybe I'm sure there's a lot of other factors. Uh, I do world building, but I'm not like a 100% world builder, so I don't know all the ins and outs. Mm -hmm. For one, one of the things that we ran into um, on the QA server uh, for 2021 was actually uh, in one of the particular pots, the shader wasn't working right, and the uh, uh, the terrain was actually you know white, but it wasn't a pure white. And with all the, the um, you know, the taller grass and weeds and stuff sticking through, it looked like a really, really good snow effect. You know, like when we turn on snow in, in the scenes, it doesn't put snow on the ground. It would be really cool if we could figure out how to do that, too. Well, I shouldn't say figure out, but we should do that. Yeah. Hold on, I'm doing a request here. This is for Rosemorn. Hold on one second. I'm trying to get you a link. Let's see if it'll let me post a link. Hey, I'm allowed to post a link. You guys see that, right? Yep. That was the uh, source file for the uh, armless lad wax cylinder. They were one in the actual file. That's a super high quality uh, MP3 version of it, I think. Cool. Should be shared. You can test, verify that you can download it. I think it should be downloadable now. Are you guys going to add treasure golems that run across the Novia map? <laughs> I don't think so. Unless that also came up when I was gone. But so That did not come up as far as I know. Uh, that may have been one that came up on a past stream is what that sounds like. Oh, okay. Uh, call back. All right. Sounds like Ray's Morton was able to get it. Yeah, just due to where some uh, a conference fell and then the uh, trick fell. Uh, I missed uh, I missed two in a row, right? Two streams in a row. It's been like a blur for me. Oh, but anyway, yeah, yeah, at least two. So you guys probably <laughs> talked about a lot of stuff I was not uh, not a not privy to until until just now as I'm hearing about it. But I do like the idea of that having like a goblin gnome. It's kind of like a you know the secret treasure scene that basically is just kind of like some of the other scenes, but with the uh, extra loot, mm -hmm. a bunch of chests in it, like a rare random encounter. Yeah, just a rare random encounter and then make it so the scene doesn't respawn. So once you go in there, it doesn't like you can't just camp out there. Oh, and my trips uh, went well to, to anybody who is I'm trying to see if there's any Syndicon people here or uh, Syndicate people. They don't see any LLTS names out there, but uh, talk to those guys. That was really good getting uh, super constructive feedback from those guys. Uh, that's the Syndicate Guild. Uh, they have a smaller presence in game, but I talked to them a lot about, you know, what, you know, what has changed and what their current thing is. Uh, and uh, got to hear all their stories about stuff. I don't think any of it was a big secret, but uh, they had kind of an issue where they they do things differently than most other guilds where they kind of all move. They try to move and like have their official guild our official game that the guild plays and they've got about 2000 active members i think so you know we're not talking about like a small guild we're talking a huge huge guild hmm. uh but they uh apparently voted within the comp or within the group or whatever and they declared this was at the start around the start of the, the year uh they declared their official game that's going to be the game for all of them to play everybody must play this game and take part of it to be new world uh, so anyway, so they they went to New World, uh, and uh, that didn't go so well, uh, as uh, you probably know if you've watched uh, how New World has gone. But anyways, they they went to New World, and apparently they went there and were there for about a month or two and kind of abandoned it. Some of this is uh, heard from 
syndicate members over after drinking a lot of beer. So if there's anything inaccurate in here, I, I blame the beer, not the not me or the person. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, that didn't go so well. So they're looking for a new game. Uh, I, I did encourage them to uh, come back. Let's see. Guild Wars 2 absolutely has had a treasure goblin, even if he was technically not a goblin. I was trying to remember, uh, what was the thing in the dungeon? Oh, the uh, NCSoft uh, B worked on him. Did, I don't think you worked I on did. it. Did you work on it? Yeah. The bling dome? The bling dome. Hold on a second. I got another prop. Hold on. All right. <laughs> I was going to say, uh, B and Sanyo both worked on... This was something uh, we handed out to certain uh, people as a marketing gimmick. Here's a bling dome. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Pooping out the coins. Oh man, <laughs> that's just bad. Hey, Chris. Yes. Did you see my newest edition in the background? Uh, I have not seen what's your newest edition in the oh in the background for your yeah. thing. Yeah. Which <laughs> oh is that a, is there a fish there? Yeah, there's a um so you can't really see it. It's um there's a <laughs> There's one guppy and uh, a new Placostomus I just got, a one inch long Placostomus. Um, the, uh, the tank, uh, the 20 gallon tank that it was in got really bad. There was uh, a lot of um, uh, blooms going on there because, you know, time of the year. So uh, the 55 gallon tank is is coming together and I'm um, going to be putting that together. So I moved them into here because they're the only, uh, well, the, the guppy was pretty much the only surviving thing that was living in that tank. So I just moved it into something like this so it's nice and clean. I'm so. in the process. I'm trying to get a single large tank and put a, basically half of my fish into that single large tank and reduce the number of tanks we have in the house just because it's easier, especially if we go on trips or whatever for somebody else to take care of. But mm. they're expensive and I'm cheap, so I'm taking my time <laughs> shopping for one and not trying to rush it too much. But yep. I'll post pictures whenever we get it. Yeah, I, everybody I, behind me still doing well in there. Yeah, there's all the sausages for those people who don't know. That's again, if you look at the size of these guys, these are that's a hot dog. These guys are all the uh, sausage fish. That's supposed to be the hot dogs and sausage tank. No, oh, now they think I'm going to feed them. Sorry, fish. Not right now. In a minute. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to build a stand for the 55 gallon and uh, decided that the, uh, after a cost benefit analysis, uh, that was just cheaper and easier for me to um, purchase a uh, MDF stand from local store. Yeah, as long as you don't get them wet, they're good. Yeah. It'll be fine. Flair, a 300 gallon tank is what I'm trying to get. They just don't go up for sale very often. Eventually, I may have to cave and spend four grand and buy one because that's about what they are to buy the uh, the type that I would want. I've just seen them and missed them on uh, various marketplaces. Yeah, I was eyeing up a 250, but I still yeah. don't have the space. I got to clean everything up over here. Get some more space and. All right. Did you pull some? Uh, did you do some things? Did you click the button a few times? Yeah, I clicked the button, but uh, How did I? Did, it's not working. It's behind. It's queued up behind something else, which is another reason why we need another oh. build machine. Damn it! Yeah. <laughs> Let's see. What's it queued up behind? Right now, it's uh, next in queue, but it's behind an integration build, I think. All right. It's got seven yeah, minutes. Gonna, we, can, we can always stop it. Yeah. Oh, okay. You want me to stop it? I'll stop it. Uh, yeah, you can stop that one. That's that one's not gonna do anything. It'll have the weekend to catch up on that stuff anyway, so I just kill it. Okay. All right. Killed. There we go. Hey, Z of Silverdale. Nice to see your name out there. Let's see. Trying to catch up on stuff. That one too. 
you grow your vegetables in your pond, I would not eat anything that's been in my fish tank. My fish are disgusting. <laughs> I do water the trees when I do my fish tank. Uh, fish water changes, though. Do, do, do. Yeah, give me some pictures. Send them to me on Facebook. Hey, look, some things came up, some prizes. Yay. Okay, so let me get another one going. Uh, br yeah, brazen spirituality. That's uh, that's one of the things that's been on our long list, and it's just it's easy enough to ignore that we don't do it. Uh, in case you missed it uh, in chat, she was saying that it would be great if Steam did consolidated patches, patch updates for people who miss patches, mm -hmm. uh, because it can take a while to download them. Uh, that, that's one of those things too that some people are like, well, it doesn't take that long. If you think it doesn't take that long, that's because you're playing on an SSD and they are not. Uh, if the patches on an SSD go fairly quick, uh, applying patches on a platter drive are insanely slow. Uh, but yeah, we do have a way we can actually do what we call roll up patches. We just haven't done them in a while just because it, it's a bit of a pain in the butt and we're kind of behind on our build machine time in terms of the queue and the size and stuff. But maybe that's one of those things that's changing now when we get back into a habit of doing that. Uh, and uh, probably what we would do, we would not do a roll up patch for every single one. Uh, we did that briefly in the old days when we had basically a full time build guy. We miss you, uh, Burning Toad. Uh, and, uh, but uh, it, it takes a lot of work to get those things. But you can do a roll up patch where we can do a patch like maybe from release you know, 103 to 104 and one that's from 104 to 105 that rolls up all the patches in between that'll make some of those easier. Really what we found though is there's there's a bigger problem though, which is uh, we need to do a better job of cleaning out our patches because we leave our patches up for a long time. And so a bunch of patches can get applied and honestly it'd be a lot quicker just to do a clean zero to whatever patch uh, for those who've seen those. I've been cleaning them out actually uh in the last month or so. And because of Q yeah. 2021, it was kind of an opportunity to clean out QA completely. Yes. Yep. You know. Yeah. And uh, L1 Moon points out the Steam thing. Steam is a different problem if you're on Steam patches. Sometimes we will touch things and it will go change a few bytes in a bunch of different files. Uh, our internal patcher, while it has its own problems, it does do Delta on Delta patches on individual files, meaning that it has a way that you know, if we have a file and 100 bytes change in a one gigabyte file, it only has a little more than 100 bytes of data that it uses and applies that to it and updates the file. Steam, if you have a gigabyte file and 100 bytes change, it throws out the whole file and makes you download the whole thing. So uh, each has their own differences. That's we do use uh, as much as we can. We try to be do everything we can to make patching easy in terms of building stuff. That's we always do deterministic builds within Unity, which means in theory, whatever we, if we do a build and we do another build, it should be exactly the same. There's no randomness to it. Uh, but we've seen that there's some changes in that too, which also can mess with Steam. So <laughs> fun times. Uh, and that is also one, just uh, since we're talking some tech stuff here, and I know you guys really care about the tech stuff. Maybe a few. Uh, but that's one of the things we do for our builds is we look at how we package stuff up. We took a pass a while back to try to make it patch better too. And one of the things we did is we took anything that was used in more than, I'm trying to remember, I think it was if it was used in more than 40 maps, 40 scenes, we would take those, whatever objects were in there. So like if there's a chair and it gets used in more than 40 scenes in the game, we take that and we put it into like a shared bundle and pull it out of the map uh, itself. And if it's less than that, though, it'll be in, you know, it could be in 38 scenes or something like that. And the reason I mentioned this is because that's one of those things. If someone goes and touches that chair, the reason we were having it moving into a common bundle was to make it so that common bundle, sure, that common bundle will get patched, but hopefully all the levels won't get touched. Because you can imagine if we had the same chair in 100 maps, uh, that would be 100, one of those map files that it has to go and update those things in the patch every time. And like Steam's going to be pushing out every one of those things. Uh, so we have taken a lot of time, spent a lot of time trying to make the patching as smooth as possible. It's still, again, we, we still got some clunkiness there, but it's not that bad. You just need to tell your friend to play more often so they don't notice the patches piling up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there you go. 
Speaking of which, we did mention the double experience was turned on. I just want to mention that because I was going back through the Ask a Dev, and I think there were like uh, there were like at least three people who'd mentioned that. So. Yep. All right, we have prizes. Oh, and Owsley wants to plug his uh, new player created quest. The family jewels are lost. Can you find them? Check out Owsley Manor in Immortal City. All right. So what are we doing for the prizes? Who's going to read them? Uh, I will read the prizes and you will read the character names because uh, punishment. You haven't been here for a while. So there you go. All right. Sounds good. <laughs> All right. I already see some duplicates in here. Yes, I do. Just when they come up, just be aware. We just let them roll. That's it for the moment. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we have some prizes. And the first one is a floppy beach hat. And that goes to Burko, Asmodi Muhul, and Z. Three names I know very well. Congrats. Yeah, the next prize is a beach umbrella. That goes to... Burko, not, uh, not a glitch in the Matrix there. Well, it may be a glitch in the Matrix that's causing that. Uh, but Burko and Keyman and Regal Griffin Hunter. Griffin Hunter. Okay, and now we're going into fall type stuff. An ornate cornucopia from 2017. Goes to Regal Griffin Hunter. I knew that was going to come up. Aurelia Silverson. Oh, wait. No, that's wrong. I just gave one away. I just screwed up. Ignore that. There's definitely not a prize coming up for Aurelia Silverson in the future. Uh, Regal Griffin Hunter, Baldrith, and Denali. All right. And then the next one is a Fall Wreath from 2019. And that Which goes, goes to, to Aurelia Silverson, Crazy Tika, and Telephantus. There you go. And the grand prize for this stream is a four-story fall elm tree. Which goes to someone who I know will appreciate it, uh, who loves Dequin, Gwendolyn Obscuro, Orlonian, and Blast It All. That's good. Blast It All. Yeah, Get there it? You go. Blast, Blast It All. Yep. Good. I like that. Congratulations to everybody. And Yep. Congratulations, to the winner. We had two duplicates. For those who haven't seen it in the past, that does not that we've got a bad thing going on that I'm not sure what it is. We've got a I've looked at it before, but I, I know what the problem is. Oh. oh, you do know what the problem is? Yeah. I know for a while it was the language stuff, but uh, I've yeah. been bouncing back and forth between different you or uh, Python versions. I've been afraid to touch anything. Yeah, th there's there's actually an order of operations problem with it saving the current winners and then going back and looking at the thing so it's in the wrong order um so but uh i'll, I'll rewrite it i actually have a prize bot that um i wrote for discord so and that's actually in python so it's easy enough mm -hmm. i just go in there and plug in the, that one it should be fine um and that one worked uh lum was using that one during the telethons cool uh let's see i'm trying to think if we have any other big news stuff to update on I'm trying to think, think. So. so there's gonna be a lot of good stuff in the next couple of months definitely uh i think i was on the last one when was richard on i'm trying to remember because i think i only missed one stream that was july 15th so okay so that's july so i missed the august stream the end Oh, no, that was the end of July. So I was on the last one. I missed the one before that. Okay. Yeah. All right. Oh, no, that was actually a special stream, I think. That was not actually the end of month stream. That's that's right. Right. That was the middle. That was, it, that was a week early. Well, we, did, right, we did streams. I think we did streams almost every Friday during July. So technically, there was some extra streams in there, but I don't think it was expected. Not me. Either. Yeah, not you. So it, but, it, just one. All right, well, I think I'm looking through right now. Let's see, I didn't see any new questions that just came up. Yeah. Uh, let's see. I do see Owsley commenting that we need our snow goggles uh, and sunglasses to work in the snow. I, I like that idea too. I like, I, for a while, then back in the really old days, we had some special stuff you could put on that you would wear that would change, that would apply full screen effects. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure why we stopped doing that. I thought they were fun. 
I think uh, yeah. uh, for for those really old people, we had for a while we had I think it was like slash old school. If you did slash old school, it would turn the screen into a pixelated mess and make it look eight uh, bit retro. <laughs> Jack it down to 256 colors and make it all pixelated. Good times. Oh, yeah. All right. Well, then, are we ready to wrap up here? Yeah, I believe so. Um, okay. The, the important stuff, I think, is to reiterate for those who came in late is the heritage yeah. stuff. We're going to be testing that early next week and should be live by the end of next week. We will get in as many of those pot changes as we can. Uh, while we got Keith here, that's Keith. You got until next Friday to get that. Uh, and uh, I think that's the big stuff is, again, heritage going away, and that will be in a patch coming up shortly. Right. Yeah. So uh, just to throw in there with the uh, heritage, that heritage and no trade are two different things. Um, so mm -hmm. don't expect that everything will go away from no trade. Uh, I suspect that there might be a few items that are, will remain no trade that will need to get no trade removed um, yeah. because of the way um, – the way because they were existed before heritage, perhaps exactly and, right, and or even after it. Double with two uh, the same. Right, right. In, in the in the store, uh, basically, there's a heritage flag. But um, I can tell you for sure that when I first started working in this with the store stuff, I didn't know how that worked. So I think I checked off a few no no trade check boxes as well. So there might be a few items out there like that. Uh, yeah. a good a good example. Uh, it's not a store thing, but the. The, uh, the deed that you get when you finish uh, the outskirts maps, which used to be when you finish the whole scene, that, right. that uh, deed will actually just stay no trade. Right. The, the, and it's, it's never related to heritage. It'll stay as is. It, exactly. Or, There's a few things that we have in the <laughs> game that need to be no trade, uh, so they will remain no trade. But it, we're talking about a small handful of items, so yeah. it's not really Quest items right. will stay no trade. Yeah. Uh, they are not heritage at all. Or uh, the quest items that are already no trade will stay no trade. Yep. And I'm sure people will be, will be reporting the things that are still no trade that they think should be turned off from no trade. Of so. course, yeah. And, and we'll as it as it uh, as it goes out, we'll we'll have a forum post about it all and and, and talk about it in a little bit more detail. Um, and I'm sure it'll come up again next month um, when we uh, do our next uh, live stream. So, um, uh, Bridge Troll has a good one, which I've forgotten that that's how it worked. Is we have uh, I think it's the blue bundles, Bridge Troll. You can confirm. But the blue bundles that have some store items in them, those things, uh, some of those items get marked as no trade when you open the bundle. Not heritage, but no trade uh, yeah. from those, those things. Yeah, that's uh, we, we might need to talk about it in uh, at a meeting yeah. uh, to is. discuss those you things. Action item. Yep. I'll write yeah, those I'm not down. a fan of any of those things. It kind of, kind of makes them weird, but I remember that that whole thing coming up is that was one of the things is people didn't want to do that. We were looking for better loot. We added in the actual store items into the blue bundles. Uh, but I think that was another one of those safety measure type things that was added on just because people were so paranoid about it is to make pay items that show up, store items that show up in loot bundles, make sure those things are no trade so that people couldn't like find some exploit and do anything. But it's been a few years and you guys haven't found an exploit, so it's probably safe for us to remove this. But we'll we'll talk about it and see if we can cut, uh, get the no trade off those. Sounds good. All right, I think that's it, guys. Uh, uh, Sanyu, you got anything for him? Nope. You got, got an ETA for when we're going to see uh, the new scene on QA? Well, like I said before, uh, it, it won't be Depressing. in the next week or whatever. But, uh, you know, because uh, in particular, because I haven't been working on it for a week. But uh, I'll. Why? Because I didn't have uh, computer access. I know, I was kidding. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, like, I, uh, what I mentioned before is I have there's two main sections. There's, there's like, the, the main uh, obvious section and then also, like, a secret area. The main obvious section, uh, I'll try to put an emphasis on getting that first so players can e at least go there. And then the, the sort of secondary section, I'll, I'll uh, lower prioritize that. Right. Okay. Well, uh, the dream is we soon have the separated QA servers and live servers, and we'll be able to do crazy things like have one on 2018 and one on 2021, and yeah. we'll also be able to do things like we could be doing a QA build and a live build at the same time. For those who don't know, this is one of those things that was we, we've never been able to do, but the process is supposed to be when we get ready to do the gold candidate that we build on QA and we build on live at the same time, publish QA so we can do a full test on QA, 
Uh, and that's one of those steps we've been skipping for a long time. So now we'll actually be able to do that again. I know yeah. it'll be crazy. Wow. Yeah, th this was one of the, uh, you know, uh, tooth fairy type of wishes for me to get the uh, additional build server. Um, all right. Okay, so with all that said, uh, Let's get out of here. The prizes will be delivered probably around Monday. I believe that um, uh, Laney is tied up on some other stuff this weekend, so um, expect that they're uh, don't expect your prizes until Monday. If they come sooner, then yay! But uh, that's probably what it is. Um, and uh, we're gonna go ahead and raid Thundagar. All right, sounds good. Make it happen. Or do you want me to do it? I've done it, I think. Yep. Oh, yep. There you go. It's a good name, Thundagar. Yeah. Did you check to make sure you can chat on his channel? No. <laughs> All right. <laughs> That's usually the one that bites me is to have it say you can't talk on the channel. Make sure oh, uh, when you go over there that you follow Thundagar if you're not already following him. You got to give support. I do. I will. Yeah, yeah. I'm just saying, everyone in chat, follow him. Flood him with uh, hundreds of new followers. Make them cry. That's the usual thing you want to do is try to make it them cry. Doesn't cost so you guys excited. anything. Just click that button for the dude. Make his day. All right. You guys ready? Yep. Well, guys, I think that's uh, probably it. Yep. Uh, thanks again for uh, Ravelox for hosting the stream rather than me having to host it because I forget how to do things because I'm old. Uh, but he is learning things because he is new. <laughs> Young, I guess. Young, yeah. Uh, yeah. Even though pretty much the same age, plus or minus a year or two. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, yeah. But uh, again, thanks for uh, the, for uh, joining us today. Get some more questions in there for Ask a Dev. It looked like most of them had already been, been answered. We need more Ask a Dev. Don't spam them, but definitely get some in there. Yeah. But I think we are ready to go uh, raid Thundergar. We will have a lot to talk about next time, I'm sure, with the 2021 stuff. And here we go. We're about to go. And see you guys next time. See you. Later. Bye.